<laughs> and what specifically about basketball would you want to learn about? Um, I don't know. I also feel like Great. Okay, we have an online. I'm a DPT to DPT student and want to learn more about preventing basketball injuries. I've never played competitively. Alright. We'll, we'll address all these issues as we go, questions as we go along. Go ahead. Um, actually, I played basketball in high school. Um, and I actually just recently sprained my ankle. So I was like, oh, it's perfectly fine. Then I actually do like hurt my ankles a lot. And like I always like kind of step too far out maybe, but like kind of like almost Make my foot bubbles like, like in the like, 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 The team wants to know how to take care of themselves through the season. Right. Well, let's see if we can, we can go through this uh, uh, PowerPoint and then we'll do some uh, demo work and have you guys come up and maybe do some exercise and just you know, show you the space. And then you at home or on, online can also, if you have some space, uh, do some of this work as well. So, as you saw, on the, if you looked at the flyer, kind of the objectives for the day were learn the risk factors for youth basketball injuries, think about practicing some jumping and landing mechanics, and then looking at some fun agility drills to improve your performance on the board. And then of course, anything that you guys have discussed, you know, we can also um, like all adjust as well. So, the game of basketball, for those of you who play, what does it involve? It involves running, and jumping, and cutting, and pivoting, and shooting, and dribbling. Okay. As kind of some of the main components. There's, you know, and when you play offense or defense, all of these components are part of the sport. Right. So, as you can see, lots of movements. Now, why are we specifically here in you know, Children's Hospital, uh, you know, UCSF Benny of Children's Hospital, it's because we work with young athletes. Why are they different? Okay. Well, you look at Yao Ming, okay, and then you look at you know a young athlete. They have a lot of differences. Okay. They this young athlete has open growth plates. Okay. The bones are completely you know formed and fused together. Okay. They're still growing. There's a great variation in size and maturity. I've been seeing you know, patients that have played that, are, that play basketball for many, many years, almost 10 years now, and I'm still shocked when I see the 12-year-old who's, you know, six inches taller than me, and then they, and then another 12-year-old comes in, and they're, you know, six inches shorter than me. Okay? So a lot of variation. And we have to address that. We can't just take, you know, every patient that comes in and say, here's what you're going to do to be successful. Okay? Everyone's a little different in how they, they're growing. Everyone's still developing their neuromuscular system and okay? how the brain and the muscle interact with each other. And then this young athlete also has growing cartilage and it's more susceptible to stress. So the, these are some of the reasons why we exist as a center uh, of the Sports Medicine Center for Young So, participation. If we look at the statistics, there's nearly one million high school participants in every year that just, just high school basketball alone. That's not even including all the people who play club, all the, you know, middle school basketball athletes. So, you're talking about a lot of people playing basketball. When you, uh, the, the, the studies, which uh, come from the National High School Sports Related Injury Surveillance Study, there's about 1.76 injuries for every 1,000 athlete exposures. 
So you're like, well, what's that? Mean? So you're looking at maybe if you have a thousand athletes, right, and it counts either a practice or a game, and each time they're exposed to their sport, there's always there's about there's a couple injuries okay, every every thousand times. So when we look at that data and we see there's you know a million high school participants, a lot of injuries. So here's what we look at. Um, so for boys basketball for 2015-16 school year, there were 322 injuries in 217,000 um, exposures. That's just from the schools that reported for this study. So the total estimated injuries nationally is about 81,000 injuries. Then if you look at girls basketball, there's only 161,000 exposures, yet there's almost 100,000 estimated injuries. So for the total injuries, you're looking at 180,000 injuries in high school athletes uh, for 2015. That's a lot of that's a lot of injuries. Yeah. And the idea with sports medicine, physical therapy, athlete development is to de decrease the number of injuries per exposure. That's why you guys are here logging in online. Is to try to figure out is there a way that we can decrease the number of injuries in our young athletes? When you talk about female versus male. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, I'll touch on that. So if we look at where basketball injuries occur, for the most part you're looking at knee injuries and ankle and foot injuries. And ankle and foot injuries predominantly, you know, 40 percent of, of the injuries um, are, are ankle and foot and then some more knee injuries. And this is from a study in uh, 2005, 2005, a little bit prior, but um, other studies that I've looked at have also given me the same amount of data. Roughly half the injuries are from the knee and the ankle. And you guys as basketball players probably see that a lot of teammates come in with crutches because they sprained their ankle or they hurt their knee. Now, the there are some injuries in sports, basketball, that you can't really do anything about. If you jump up and you land on somebody's foot, it's pretty hard to prevent that. Okay? Or if you're standing there and someone just runs into your knee, you can't really do anything about it. It doesn't matter how much work you do, um, it's, it's pretty hard to, to prevent that injury. So that's only 50% of injuries. The other 50% are overuse injuries. That means you're doing something over and over and over and over again, and it puts the stress on the tissues. And when it does that, it causes these things we call overuse injuries. Okay, it's pretty much if you're doing something either too much or maybe too fast or a combination of that. So this is where you know, as a physical therapist, as our athletic trainers, what we do is hope to prevent these overuse injuries by figuring out how people move, what exercises they need to do to get stronger and more flexible in order to prevent some of these, or reduce at least some of these overuse injuries. Some other things we talk about, you know, with you know, the kind of the big thing, you know, obviously ACL injuries. If you look at those contact injuries, whether they're your foul or hit from behind, that's only 30%. And so, again, a low number that you can't really do anything about. If I get someone running into my knee and it goes the wrong way, you can't do anything. But 70% are non contact. That means I'm just running and cutting, or I'm jumping and landing, and my knee just buckles. And I, I don't know how much basketball you get to watch, you know, whether it's your teammates or you know, just professional, collegiate, anything like that. You see these types of injuries happen over and over and over. Someone's running and all of a sudden they just fall to the ground and grab their knee. Okay. So, and the other thing you look at is a lot of times ACL injured athletes often think, you know, when they recall their injury, they're like, there are some unanticipated events. You know, I got perturbation of someone's me or I lost my concentration when I landed and all of a sudden my knee just like 
hyperextending or twisting. So that's the kind of thing that we can work on in order to you know, decrease those exposure or those injury uh, exposure. And then you know, I talk about gender bias. Well, unfortunately, just as in the overall injury rates, when we looked at how many, uh, you know, the injury rates for females were was much higher. And actually, let me just. Um, okay. There you go. If we go back here, you can see <clears throat> even that it's so much higher with the female athletes. Competition injury rates is up to four, so, we're, so really high for females, especially during competition. Almost twice as, or one and a half times as much as the males. Then, if you look at some other studies for ACL injuries, you actually see that the incidence is four to eight times in people. That is terrible news. Okay, especially since there's you know a lot of um, you know half the population. Um, and then our high school athletes, that high risk group, kind of that 15 to 20 years. And then unfortunately, one out of 100 high school female athletes and one out of 10 college female athletes experience ACL injury every year. So that's bad news. Luckily for you guys in our audience, you're here, we're going to learn, we're going to figure out is there something that we can do to decrease that chance of injury? Especially because or playing the sport that we love. So part of decreasing the injury rate is learning proper mechanics. Right? And we learn proper mechanics, we can get our full potential. So you might be only working when you're on the court as at a, at a small percentage of your actual capacity. So you can actually get that full potential. You can utilize more of your strength and your power. You're more efficient in your sport, you reduce your risk of injury, and you improve how you play your stat. If you can jump higher, run faster, um, then you're probably going to spend less time on the bench and more time playing, which we all strive to do. So part of this proper mechanics, we can look and see what is improper mechanics and what we do, and you can see here that the knee, like, or the foot rolls inward. The knee goes inward. The hip goes inward. So you can start seeing that this inward positioning is not good. Okay? And then that's what's considered medial collapse. Okay? So um, it's this whole triplicate, you know, these three things working together, putting you in a terrible position. Okay? It's like a position of no return. If you're in this position, good luck. <laughs> You'll probably be seeing me for a year. So we don't want that. Here is an, you know, a patient that we uh, evaluated at our motion lab. And you can see what happens. This is from a drop jump. So they uh, are standing on this platform. They jump off, they jump off again, and they land. Okay. And you can see these little markers on her knees, little ankle markers. Okay. And you can see what's happening is that her, tr you know, she's kind of a little bit tilted there. Okay. Her knee, you can see her hip is here and her foot is here. She drew a straight line here, and her knee is way inside that. This doesn't look good, right? And imagine if you do this while you're playing basketball, over and over and over and over again. It's not, you know, generally if you do this a couple times, may, you know, there's, it's unlikely that you're going to get okay, So if I just land like that once or twice, I'm going to get injured. If I do that over and over repetitively, I'm going to start getting overuse injuries. And then at some point there's going to be some failure, and then that's when you, you know, all of a sudden you see all the I I always tell my patients it's like taking a paper clip, okay, and you just bend it back and forth, okay, over time. What happens? 
some point, it breaks. Luckily for, our, for us, as humans, our bodies aren't that brittle. So we have chances to fix that so that it doesn't happen. Yeah. So you can see her foot going in, her knees going in, her hip isn't you know, doing the right thing. Now, if you look at a patient, and this is, this is a patient that we've worked with for quite a while, and he, I don't have his picture from the first time he was at the lab, but he looked like this, maybe even a little bit worse. And we worked with him in physical therapy to correct his positioning, and now you can see foot, knee, hip. Okay, that nice alignment. That's what we want. Is we want that consistent time in, time out. Whether he's in the lab, whether he's in the clinic, and then that's that's the easy stuff. But it, <laughs> what does he do with his body position when he's at practice, when he's at game, when no one is watching? You know? He has this pressure. You know, I told him, hey, when you go to the lab, this stuff better be perfect. We've been working for months now. Okay, make sure it's perfect. If he did it. But then the next thing you look at is, does he do it well when there's balls flying at him and there's people running at him and he's getting bumped? Is that happening? Now, uh, Chris, can you double click on that? So, okay. just a little, you know, little video. I, you know, I love these videos because you start seeing some of them, all the muscle activation that's involved in, in jumping. Right? So you have. You know, not only do you have lower body muscles, you have your upper upper extremity working, you have you know your core musculature working, a lot of things. And then I especially like um, the next one, which is the back side, because that's where your power comes from. So on the next slide here, you can see here. Now Chrissy was saying this guy is pretty unfortunate, he only has one glute, but <laughs> it still gets up pretty high. Right? Um, but you can see that there's just this big muscle right here. This big muscle right here that's working. Okay? <clears throat> Boom. And it, and it gets activated. That's, you, know, you use that whole backside of your butt and your calf to get that explosive. Okay? Now, over the years of practice, um, unfortunately, a lot of athletes both male and female are missing that strength right there, and that activation right there. And so then we go, oh yeah, you're probably, you know, you're at a much higher risk for injury because you're not using these muscles back here. Okay. And it's not your fault. Nobody ever said to me when I was younger and playing basketball, you know, when I was playing basketball or any, you know, all my athletes when they come in, they don't. Nobody ever said, oh, you know what, you got to use these muscles more. Your body just does whatever it does kind of as a, as a natural pattern. And you actually have to train some of these things. Um, and that's what we do in our centers is work a lot on the butt and the gut. Okay. The butt, the glutes, and then all the core musculature. And the core musculature, we talk about it, is kind of the whole thing. Okay. It's not just like when people think of the like core muscles and they say, oh, it's your abs. Am I going to get sick of that when I work with you? Like, no, it's actually all these muscles that support your spine, um, even your pelvis. So, you know, I could spend all day stand, standing here and saying, here's the 50,000 injuries that you're going to get. And I don't want to do that. That's boring. You can read a book. What are the injuries that I get when I play basketball? Ankle sprains and knee, you know, knee sprains and muscle strains and you know, people fracture, you know, both. But hopefully, if you're not injured or you had a minor injury, um, these are the things that we really want to talk about: how to reduce your injury risk. Okay? If you have an injury, you're going to come see me or a physical therapist or your athletic trainer, uh, one of the orthopedic doctors. So you're already going to get that you know, information about that specific injury. Yeah. 
know, and then if you're in a sports medicine class, then you get to know all about the different injuries. But for, for our purposes here, I really want to reduce your injury. So how do we do that? We have to warm up properly. Okay. And, uh, you know, sometimes like, oh, I got, to, I, you know, I got to practice late, or I got to the game late, and, you know, coach is yelling at me, and I need to just get in the game and, you know, you know start going or whatever like that. But if you do, you know, if you have a proper dynamic warm up, use the muscles in the, um, in the way that they're going to get used during the game, you're less likely to tear a muscle or pull, a, you know, pull something or break something or So dynamic warm up. Like we talked about before, proper mechanics, how you jump, how you land, how you squat. You know, all these positions are key. And not only do you have to practice them, but then you have to do that during a game, which requires you know, your neuromuscular system. You know? And you have to be able to do it automatically. If you're standing there and you're playing defense and you're like, I need to move to the right and not let my knee buckle in. The defender has passed you, or the you know, offensive player has passed you and is, you know, scoring on you. So that's not good. All right, so I'm gonna make sure. Um, you know, we always we don't forget that the core is there, it's kind of our our base you know, for, for everything that we do when we move. And then the biggest thing is that we have to practice. Okay? So if you come to this today and then you learn a few things or you go and do our uh, work with our athlete development program or you have an injury and you come to physical therapy and you do these things for a short time, okay? six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, are the different programs that um, the research has shown that it's been effective. And then you stop. Well, unfortunately, your injury risk profile goes back up, which is unfortunate. So as long as you're playing sports, you want to keep you know, maintaining some type of, of programming in order to um, reduce your injury risk. So here's a dynamic warm-up. And we have all this uh, information uh, we can give you any of this information on this, uh, on this, on these PowerPoints, but um, it's available on our website. Um, if you email Chrissy when you when you signed up or called in or something like that, she has all the uh, all this uh, documentation as well. So, um, so any handouts are available. So you can see here a dynamic warm up, and you know, you're looking at first of all, you kind of have to break. Sweat, um, get the blood flowing into the muscle, and then you can do, you know, there's a few different things. If you guys are interested in, um, in doing some of these things, we can do that as well. So you guys, you guys want to? We did have a class. Oh, you did have a class. Okay, so you know that. That's great. Yeah, we had that happen. Oh, good. They're great. Yeah. So, you guys mind demonstrating a little bit for our web audience? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you can learn that. All right. So the first, you know, so we do, so we, you know, if you do it, and we're going to do it just at a light speed since you're not really fully, you know, you don't have to sweat yet. But you can do like a high knees jump. So, you want to try that? Thank you. What's your name? Right. Yeah. Thank you for coming forward and helping us out with this demo here. You didn't realize that you had signed up to demonstrate. All right. So what you do is you do a high knees jog. Actually, you're gonna get those knees up. And so watch you start off over on this side, right? Okay? And you're just gonna jog, do a little high knees jog down the other back. Okay? Perfect. Okay. And you know, when we look at a dynamic warm-up, we don't just do it for the sake of it. Now that what you what you've probably seen when you're with your team is that everyone's kinda like <laughs> I'm doing my dynamic warm-up now, this is great. Alright, I'm ready to play. So you really want to take advantage of this time that the coach has you know, given you to make sure that the muscles actually get stretched out, that the, the neuromuscular system is primed and ready to go. Right. So there's the, uh, and then what about, um, you do like a butt kicker? 
showing kick your butt. There you go. Look at that. Yep. Showing you kick your butt. And you're trying to keep your knees straight down and trying to get your heel to your butt. All right. We do a little bit of a side shuffle. It's kind of like a defensive slide in basketball. You face forward. Good. And then you move back. That's good. Okay. And then now we're gonna do a little hip opener. So you walk forward here and you pull up, and then and then you just stop. Okay, do a little nice stretch there. Okay. Okay. You're just trying to get that the back, the the, the glutes a little stretched out. <coughs> Activating some of the muscles in the front, okay, just stretching out the back. Um, you're going to do a back hall. I'm not going to do that here. Um, and then a Frankenstein march is a great one for the hamstrings. All right, so you're going to stand and you're going to kick up as high as you can. You don't have to go all the way up here. Okay, keep both knees nice and straight. Okay. Again, you see a lot of um, you see people doing this Frankenstein march and doing it kind of haphazardly. Their knees are bending, or their back is arching, and you'll see kind of this kind of thing. Um, and that's going to put more stress on your body. Right? So we want to again, if you can't kick up as high, and honestly, I have very tight hamstrings, then you just go as far as you can until you get that stretch. Right? So you don't have to go all the way up. Right? But everyone's like, I don't need to touch my hands to do all kinds of compensatory. Uh, a walking lunge. All right, so you're going to step, lunge down. Oh my gosh, did you plant yourself here? I did not pay her. <laughs> you know, to here. She came up with her own volition to demonstrate all these exercises. Okay. And again, you're looking at, remember that squat, uh, or we looked at the mechanics, making sure that knee is in line with that second toe. Okay. And then a Z run again, I'm not going to have her do this, but it's pretty much where you run forward. And then backwards, and then forward, and then backwards. That, and then a star jump, which is where, um, again, you know, you don't, this will, you're looking at if you had a star pattern in the front, and you just jump to all the different directions. Okay, and then back and forth. Okay, and then so that's kind of the, your dynamic warm up. Um, you're preparing the muscles for, for the sport demand, you're increasing your core body temperature. You're increasing your heart rate and blood flow, and then you increase the rate and flow of muscle contraction. Okay. Now, how many of you have, uh, you know, do a, like a static stretch before, like you're doing a static stretch? Not before. anymore. Not any <laughs> and you guys, you know, obviously have. <laughs> <laughs> right. And and, so, and the studies have shown, have shown that there's a slight decrease in strength um, when you do that. So it's important. That we do something that is more active, and you're moving through the motions that, you're, uh, that the body is going to do. So you, when you're playing basketball, you're going to slide to the back and slide. Okay? You're going to be down into a squat position for defense. So when you're doing that, you're going to be jumping, running in different directions. You need to work on those things. The muscles are good. Okay. Um, and then, you know, we're so we're in, like dynamic warm up. The other thing that we want to look at, you know, is how you move. Okay? So, you know, the nice thing with our center is is our motion analysis lab and sport performance lab. We do video analysis. We measure the impact forces, like how hard you land, how hard you land on your right foot versus your left foot from a, from a hop, uh, and you compare those things and you see is there something that might be going wrong? If you're moving incorrectly. Um, are you landing on one foot much harder than the other foot? And those differences can um, be, you know, a possible, you know, increased risk for injury. And then we also do um, muscle strength testing. So if the front muscle, you know, like let's say um, we do a lot of uh, comparing the quads, which is the muscle in front of your thigh, the hamstring, which is the muscle in the back, and you're looking at is that ratio a normal ratio, or is it, you know, is one muscle much stronger than the other muscle? And if it is, that um, difference in strength can cause you to 
be more likely to have So that's just some of the things that, um, that we can provide. Also do uh, with part of the running a video analysis is uh, running on a treadmill and seeing you know um, how you look from front and back you know uh, from the side um, and then looking at how you know how many steps you're taking you know uh, how fast you're doing and how much your body is moving so different a lot of different measurements um, and that all is you know there's computer generated. Analysis in a physical therapist uh, looks at that analysis as well and gives some recommendations. So, a really nice way to kind of see how you move. If you've done that, or you know, you have somebody trained to look at how you move, you start seeing, hey, here's some things that might not work that well. We saw that slide earlier of the one patient who had her knee falling in and she kind of tilted and everything like that. And so then we then look at what's the proper alignment for these different tech, uh, things, you know, whether it's running, jumping, landing, uh, cutting, um, and how do we fix it? So we look at body alignment. Is the spine erect? Okay? Versus you can sometimes they'll have a little bit of a curve. Are the shoulders forward and back? Is the chest over the knees, or is it where they're kind of like falling backwards? Okay. Um, again, we're looking at the trunk. Is there is it leaning towards one side? Again, is it going too far forward or too far backwards? For landing, so we're looking at are the hips and the knees bent, or you know if you're landing in this kind of hard you know, straight position, you're putting a lot of stress up through your body. And then if the knee position kind of in line with that second toe, you can see this patient's doing a nice job. This is a, where they're running forward and decelerating, you know, which we do a lot of when you run forward into the ball, you know, somebody steals the ball from your team and then you can now turn it back. Okay? And when they're doing that, is this position kind of centered? Okay? Versus um, sometimes you see that the hips are way back and their body is straight up like this and they're kind of falling backwards. Okay. So your body's going to have to recover from that. So that's good alignment right there. Really, really nice. Okay. So then you look at the mechanics. Before you talk about jumping and landing and all that stuff, you actually have to talk about can I do things just standing there? So if someone squat, you know, if someone comes into my clinic and they squat and they do this kind of thing, I go, okay. If I have them jump, what are they going to do? Yeah. Right. So first of all, I have to say, hey, can you squat? And you can see you're standing in the squat. Okay, your knees are bent. You can see again her knees are in line with her second toe there. Right. If you look at her from the side, you can see the trunk here. A nice line here, and then down here, you don't see her knees going too far past her toes. Like that. That's a that's a nice squat. Um, and if obviously if you have trouble with a the squat, then we have to train that first before we even talk about jumping. So, you know, I wrote in the thing, you know, practice jumping and landing. Well, part of jumping and landing should be to do a squat. And then just you know, there's lots of different exercises that you can do. You know, I, again, there's hundreds of exercises you can choose from. Um, a lot of times, if you're looking at some exercises that help you with strengthening those glute muscles, you know, doing the bridge, this clamshell where you have this band around your knees and you're lifting those knees apart. Okay. Doing this is this kind of triple extension, which is great for basketball players. I say, hey, do a calf raise, and then the baby goes. Well, whenever you go up for a layup and you're pushing off this leg, you're getting the point of the toe, the knees extending, and your you know, your butt's up. So you're jumping up and into that layup position. And so that kind of mimics um, what you do on the court. And then if, and then then we talk about this core training, you know, doing planks, side planks, supermans on the ball, a lot of different Strengthening exercises. 
But the reason I bring this core training up is they looked at, there was a study of, of nine weeks of core training. And they compared that to doing um, leg strength training or a combination, right? And they found that it was similarly effective to, you know, so if you like do a bunch of jump or leg strengthening, you're putting stress on your joints and muscles versus you can take some of that stress away by doing some core strengthening and still get the same benefit. So um, that's a positive thing. So we say, hey, we want to incorporate some of this core training in so that, you know, you only have so much, you know, your body can only withstand so much, right? Especially if we talk about young athletes and they're still growing and, um, you know, they have these growth plates that are still open. Well, if you can take some of the stress off by doing some other types of activity, in essence, cross training, you know, it's almost like you're cross training, then um, that's going to be a net positive for some of the children. Alright, and then we look at some functional training. You can see, um, you can do a split squat on the foam pad. So I didn't bring the foam pad down with me, but in essence, get into a lunge. Now, I'm not, I play basketball, but I'm not that good at dribbling with both hands. Now, are you, can you dribble left and right? No? Oh. So you get into a lunge position, okay? And then you dribble left, okay? Um, so you're doing some, uh, and you can do that, you can make it harder by standing on a foam pad, okay? Now, hold on, Mariana, stop right here. Yeah? <laughs> Have you ever stood on one of these closes? Yeah. All right. I'll help you out, okay? Stay up here, uh, you can watch your face that way. Yeah, face the people at home. <laughs> okay, so. You get into a squat. Okay, your squat is. And you can put your butt back and down. And you practice a little bit. Put a little ball back and forth. Just a little bit of, a little bit of work here. Right on it. And you can see as she starts getting fatigued, she'll start kind of standing up into it a little bit more. So I'm recommending her to kind of get her butt down, squat into it a little bit more. There she goes. How are you feeling? The burning yet, and you can start seeing the muscles shaking. And shaking is okay when you're doing exercises or uh, working hard, um, because the muscles are, are reacting, and okay? they're they're working on um, they're learning. If you're teaching that kind of neuromuscular system, really catching and passing, and then you can also do things like um, dribbling while you're squatting. Okay? So lots of Really, there's not a lot of bad exercises, but you can perform them poorly. Um, you, know, you can do too much. Uh, then other things that you can do with functional training, you can have someone, you can do a star drill where you start, um, and you call it a number, and then they um, run back and forth to the uh, different spots. And this is one I really love, uh, like, not as a player, but I'm a because I just have to stand there. <laughs> but you stand there, and you just throw the ball randomly onto the court, and the player chases after it. And then you have a second ball, and you go to a different part of the court, and you chase it after it. So they're playing a game of chase after the ball, which is fun for them. Not really. um, but it really gets uh, their, their aerobic, um, uh, or their, you know, their, their aerobic and anaerobic systems work. This one. Okay, so, this is from uh, the journal of orthopedic sports physical therapy, just some um, kind of return to sports after somebody's had an uh, injury. But these are things that you don't need to have an injury you can do. And then uh, this is a sports metrics training program. And you know, this is just an example. You know, I'm not saying, hey, go out there and just run through this program because it takes more, it takes, it's a little bit more technical. There's different types of uh, jumps and landing and, and how to do it properly. But the idea is there's these training programs out there. And as you know, we've talked about kind of today about the incidences of female 
you know, basketball players and their injury rates generally in competition and with ACL injuries. And we have these training programs to improve neuromuscular and performance indices in female high school basketball players. These things exist. They're out there. You need, you know, you need a, somebody who's trained in teaching these things and looking at movement to help you do these things. But you can really um, improve your performance and your, and your injury risk factors by doing some of these things. And these things also, you know, I talked a lot about injury, 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 but if you worked on some of these programs, you would also improve your performance. Right? We've done some of these um, tra jump training programs with, some, with groups of uh, athletes in our clinics and increase their vertical, increase their broad jump, increase their single leg hop. Um, and that translates to, you know, if I'm, if I'm like an inch away from getting that rebound and I can jump that effort. How many days that rebound over this other player who's not going to be there? And I have less than three. That's nice. Um, so not going to go, you know, not going to go through, um, through the, the jump program, but you can see there's quite a few different things: wall jumps, tuck jumps, squat jumps, barrier tuck jumps over and back, you know, against uh, over barriers or hurdles or things like that. But, um, and then this one's like a whole, you know, we do a lot of this jump training program in our clinic, but there's also, in this program, they looked at adding agility training, acceleration speed and aerobic training, and then doing some ladder reaction training and dot drill. You know, more specific uh, activities. And then, we talked about doing some agility training. Right. One more thing I add, and then, and then you're free. And then I added to such a nice outfit that we got to get our sports medicine. Absolutely. The young athlete's t shirt. So she's been so helpful today. Demonstrating for, for the audience in and out of here. All right. So now we, you know, in our clinic, we have these agility ladders. You can buy them for. It's under 30 bucks online, or you can put tape down, which um, that's what I cheated and did in the motion lab. <laughs> it's a very cheap way to get on the agility ladder. All right, and you don't have to do all So we have this we have this icky shuffle, right? So what you do is you start on one side of the of the ladder, right? You're gonna go here, 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 right? So you're just going back and forth. All right, so you're going to do that. Now you see. There you go. And then obviously you can increase speed. You can do repetitions and things like that. And then you want to try doing it backwards. Maybe do backwards. There you go. It's not much harder. You don't have your visual system to. You can do lateral in and out, so you can go, you can go in, out, in, and out. All right, so you can do try that. She doesn't weigh that at me. Uh, no. and, then, and then why don't you do you want to try it with uh, one leg? Okay, so, I mean, all these things, there's, there's different variations you can do. Um, Out. And then, for instance, like a slalom jump, um, you're gonna go, you know, you go in and out. And there's 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 so many different variations for all the all the different jumping things. Now, in addition to doing all these jumping, you know, agility ladder things like that, is you can add variations like throwing a ball or Bumping the person. Okay. So one more thing I got. <laughs> okay. So you can do. So I'm gonna have you do the icky shuffle because we're so good at that. Okay, so that first one we go in and out. And then what you do is when she gets over here, you just bump her. Okay. 
right? Because this is really what she does when she plays basketball, is that you know, you're know you not just on an island free moving around. Somebody's bumping you. you know, someone's running into you. you know, there's other players on the court screaming, that kind of thing. So you're going to have to be able to, um, to, to withstand some of those other forces. So in our clinic, you know, after you have an injury, we start with, hey, here's the things that you can do without any contact, really concentration, looking in the mirror, working on your mechanics, and then as you move forward through, you're looking at, oh, you know what, you better be able to do things like getting bumped by somebody. <laughs> so if you look at kind of, you know, the overall message for for us it's that injury risk is you have to warm up in order to start with jump landing training programs you have to make sure you have a proper squat you know your core musculature if you work that that can that's a benefit and then you have to keep practicing again if you you know they've done those studies some of them have have had um, one study I looked at they had um, some participants, you know, didn't get much result, and part of their conclusion was, hey, they just weren't doing the things. You can't get better if you're not doing. So, questions. So, um, so we talked about. Um, oh, so so ankle injury is kind of like that, you know, kind of the big one. You kind of. If the, you're in the 40%, right? For ankle injuries, um, and, and some of that balance training. You know, if we looked at uh, how, remember uh, Steph Brady we used to have all kinds of ankle problems, right? And if uh, you read about what he did, he worked on a ton of core, core and hip strengthening. You're like, he did so much ankle strengthening. No, he did a bunch of core and hip strengthening, and obviously you know, he did pretty well. Um, any other questions? We talk, um, people ask me a lot about whether or not they should have uh, wear braces or not wear braces mm -hmm. pro, uh, proactively uh, for basketball. And I guess it's the same question for volleyball right now. Um, should you wear just ankle braces just to prevent? Or um, do they actually, if you rely on those? Yeah, so the question is, you know, what, what about bracing for, for ankles? You know, should we do this as a preventative measure? Um, the research uh, that talks about ankle injuries, that initial ankle injury, whether or not you wear a brace doesn't, um, hasn't been significant. So if you have never had an ankle injury, whether or not you wear a brace, your injury risk is probably similar. Um, but if you've had an ankle injury, an ankle sprain, then, then the research suggests that you do wear one of the lace up ankle braces um, to prevent another ankle injury. Once you've had an ankle injury, you're very susceptible, <laughs> and you have a high uh, injury rate for, for ankle sprains. As opposed to taping, or? Uh, they did the bracing, and the reason they recommended the bracing was because it can self tighten and it's consistent versus taping. Um, there's some inconsistency uh, with uh, who's doing it. Obviously, at uh, the schools that we support, all the athletic trainers, you know, they have years and years of experience taping ankles, and they, um, and then it's, you know, which way it's supposed to go. There's there's more variation to it um, than if you just have like, hey, somebody showed me how to tape my ankle. And so, the other thing with taping is that uh, within 15 minutes, the tape does um, loosen up quite a bit, um, and then nobody has ever seen besides like you know, some people can retape at halftime, but for the most part, especially like high school and things like that. If you take off your tape at halftime and ask your athletic trainer to tape it together, you'd be like, why don't you take it off? There's still some neuromuscular benefits. Um, are some proprioceptive benefits, like your ascendation, 
um, to take gives you a certain um, like positional sense and things like that. But it's helpful regardless if there's some uh, movement in it. But the, the braces are nice because you can do it yourself. Uh, is there a resource that suggests which type of shoes are best to wear, level mid or high top? I do not know the answer to that question. I haven't seen the research um, for that. And I don't know if it's because you know, everyone has their own kind of preference on it and they haven't done like a study that, I haven't seen a study that said, hey, you must wear a certain type of shoe. So I think the, I think the, you know, this may or not may not be true if you know a lot of what you hear is, oh yeah, wear high top, you know, to protect your ankles. But I don't know. Again, you're looking at that similar question as of, well, if I wear low top to wear an ankle brace, is that the big thing? Or do I wear an ankle brace? That's um, I don't know. But that's a good question. Okay. Anything else? So we do have a feedback form in the back, or if you're online, I think you get sent a feedback form. So I'd mm -hmm. love to hear your feedback for future um, presentations. If there are things you want to learn about, it doesn't have to be basketball related. We work with athletes of all kinds in our centers. Um, we have a dance medicine program. We work, you know, I've, I've worked with fencers. I've worked with uh, horseback riders. I've worked with and then all different major sports. Uh, so you know, we, we do um, see a little bit of everything. So if you have specific topics that you're interested in, I think next year we're moving towards more uh, webinars. Um, so you can always um, look on our website and see when the next, when the next webinar is. Um, our programming is available for coaches, teams, athletes. If you're interested, if parents are interested, um, you know, our you know teams or coaches are interested. We do provide um, training programs. You know, I'd love to get whole basketball teams into our motion lab and have them run through you know a lower extremity screen, and then see, hey, what's our you know, and then have them go through you know a six or an eight week you know like a sports metrics type program or something similar to that. We had a volleyball team do that last year. They came through, we did testing for everybody, put them through six weeks of jump training, the sports metric training, put them back through testing, everyone showed improvement. I want to do that with some basketball teams, so if, you, you know, if you're interested, you know, some, some folks are interested, please you know, give us give them. You can call me, you can call Christy. You can always email sportsmedicine at mail.cho.org. That goes straight to me and I share it with all the managers. And then you know our lab is available for um, uh, for different injury screening, or if you are injured already, you need some physical therapy work. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you to the online audience for coming and uh, spending the time with us. Um, e uh, my email is. Uh, TMAI at mail.cho.org. Um, I'm also on, you can go up to the Chill Talk website and you can find me there, uh, or you can call uh, the Sports Medicine Center for the Okay, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.